Hello and welcome to A Level Math. This is the third video in the chapter sets. Uh, so, if you haven't seen uh, the previous two videos covering the basics of sets and subsets, then I will request you to cop, uh, to click on the above i button and see those videos first, and then only move to this video. So, let's get started. In this video, we'll be covering about unions and intersections, about uh, differences of a set, about universal sets and complement sets. So, let's start with unions and intersections. So, suppose that I give you two sets. First set is, suppose, 0, 1 and 5. And the second set is 2, 1 and 4. Then the union of these two sets, as the name suggests, is both of these sets united. So you have to list down all of the elements that are there in either A or B or both. So what we do, we list down all of those elements that are there in either A or B or both. So this is the united set. So we call it the union of A and B. And we denote it as A union B. So this is the symbol of union over here. Now what if I ask you to find the intersection of these two sets? As the name suggests, intersection is the point where these two sets intersect or that means the points that are common to both of A and B. So the elements that are common to both A and B is the only number 1. So, we write it as A intersection B is equal to the singleton set 1. So, this over here is the symbol for intersection. So, remember union of two sets or even two or more sets means all the elements of any of the set. And remember we don't have to repeat the elements because that is not allowed in sets. We cannot repeat the elements inside a set. So you take all of the elements and write them down just once. Make sure you're not leaving out any element. So that gives you the union of two or more sets. Similarly, if you have if you have to find out the intersection of two sets or even two or more sets, just list down all those elements that are common to all of those sets. So let's see how we can formally define unions and intersections. The union of two sets A and B is the set of all those elements which are either in A or in B or both A and B. So this is the symbol for A union B. Similarly, the intersection of two sets A and B is the set of all those elements which are common to both A and B and this is the symbol for A intersection B. Okay, let's move on. Disjoint and intersecting sets. We have already discussed what intersecting sets are. So if two sets are having some common elements, they are said to be intersecting sets. So the, in the previous example, A and B were intersecting sets. But it may sometimes so happen that two sets might not have any common element in them. In that case, they are known as disjoint sets. So say for example, we have A is equal to 3, 4 and 5 and B is equal to 1 and 6. Here A and B are disjoint sets because they are not having any common elements. So in this case A intersection B will actually be a null set because there are actually no elements inside A intersection B. If there would have been some element inside A intersection B, they would have been intersecting. So like in our previous example, A intersection B was singleton 1. But if there are no common elements, that means there are no elements in the set. So it's actually the empty set or the null set. You could also have written it down as just empty parenthesis. So this is how we define disjoint sets. For disjoint sets, the intersection is a null set. Similarly, if two sets are intersecting, then their intersection is non-empty. It is not an empty set. It has at least an element inside it. So this is what the definition says. Two sets A and B are said to be disjoint if their intersection is empty and they are said to be intersecting 
if the intersection is non empty or not equal to 5 or the null set. Okay, so let's take an example over here. We are given three sets set A, set B, and set C. And we have to find out A intersection B. So, can you tell me what A intersection B would be here? So, A intersection B will be the common elements in A and B. So, can you tell me what are the common elements in A and B? 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 2, 4, 6, 7. So, there are actually no common elements. So, this is actually a null set. And similarly, let's find out what A intersection C is. So, we are having some common elements over here. 3 is common to both. So, we write down 3 as the first element. Then 5 is also common to both. So, we write down 5 as the second element. 7 is common to both. And that's it. There are no further common elements. So, we can conclude that A and B are actually disjoint sets. Whereas A and C are intersecting sets. Okay, let's take up one more example over here. So we take the same sets A, B and C and try to prove these results. This is the first thing that we need to prove. Consider this to be number 1 and this to be number 2. So let's try and prove question number 1 first. So we have to find out A union B union C. So that means we have to solve the brackets first. So let's find out what is B union C. B union C is all the elements combined in B and C. So and remember repetition not allowed. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. This is B union C. Now what if I have to again unite these elements that means take a union with the set A. So I'll be getting A union B union C. So now what I have to do is take this set and this B union C and find out all the elements that are there in both. So we have to write down the entire set. So the co not the common elements. So all the elements united from all of these sets will be 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 9. Okay, so it's 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 9. Okay, now take the right hand side part of this equality. Let's first find out what is A union B. Because, that's, because that is in the bracket, so we need to solve it first. So A union B is all of the elements of A and B. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. Right? And what is A union B united with C? So that means we have to take all the elements from A union B as well as C and combine them into one single set. So, it will be nothing but this set itself because all of these elements are already there in C. So, C is not going to add anything new to this set. So, it's just the same set again. All the way up to 9. So, we see that these two sets actually turn out to be equal. So, uh, let me tell you that this result, that A union B union C is equal to A union B union C is not just true for these three given sets but it is actually true for all of the sets. That means you can take any sets for A, B and C of your choice and this result will actually hold true. You can try and figure out some more examples for yourself to see how it works. And I leave question number two for you as an exercise and again the same thing applies over here. This res these results, both of this these results are not just true for these three sets, rather they are actually true for any sets of your choice. You can take any sets A, B and C of your choice. Okay, so let's move on to some commutative laws of sets. But before we move on to commutative laws of sets, let me first tell you what commutative laws are. So uh, let's take this example. What is 2 plus 3? 
so whatever it be we know that it's 5 but still we are not concerned with that whatever it be 2 plus 3 is actually equal to 3 plus 2 that means this addition operation these are actually called mathematical operators plus multiplication are actually mathematical operators we say that this operator is commutative if you can switch the position of these numbers so plus is a plus is able to commute with respect to these numbers but what about uh, a subtraction so is 2 minus 3 equal to 3 minus 2 of course not because 2 minus 3 is minus 1 whereas 3 minus 2 is 1 so subtraction the operation of subtraction doesn't follow commutative law okay so this is the meaning of commutative law you can switch the places of these two numbers now similarly we have to find out whether unions and intersections which are also operators operator is something that takes in two numbers and throws out some other number in case of sets unions and intersections are operators as well but instead of taking numbers they take sets so they take two or more sets and spits out some other set just like we have plus and minus operating on numbers they take some numbers and throws out some other number similarly unions and intersection takes out takes in some sets and throws out some other set so we have to now see whether unions and intersection follow this commutative, commutative law or not so yes they follow commutative law because a union b is equal to b union a so you can switch the positions of a and b that is why union follows commutative laws now can you uh, think about it a little bit why does it follow commutativity because what is union union is just taking up all the elements that are there in a and b right so suppose you have two elements a and b and i ask you to unite them that means take all of the elements that are there in both of these sets so will the order matter in which order you are taking the sets say for example if you take all the elements of a and then go on adding the elements of b or if you take first the elements of b and then go on to add the elements of a it would not actually make any difference to the final answer that is why it it this rule actually holds good for unions and similarly for intersections a intersection b is equal to b intersection a because the order doesn't matter we have to just find out the elements that are common to both a and b so it doesn't matter in which order you go whether you take a first and then go for finding out the common elements of b or whether you go for b first and then take only those elements that are also there in a this order doesn't impact the final answer that is why both unions and intersections follow the commutative laws i hope that's clear okay associative laws what are associative laws so associative laws includes brackets because they will be including three numbers so suppose i give you these three numbers 2 plus 1 plus 3 now in whatever order you may add them say for example if you add these two first or if you add these two first and then add two so either if you add these two first and then add three to it or if you add these two first and then add two to it the order will not be different uh, the, sorry the final answer will not be different so let's see whether unions and intersections follow the associative rules or not So do you think that both of these sets will be equal? So do you think that this set will actually be equal to this set? Yes indeed because we have just proved these results right? It was only a few minutes back that I asked you to that I showed you in fact how to prove these results and I asked you to prove that the associativity laws hold good for intersections as well. So this will be actually equal to this. So these you have to prove on your own by taking the same exam. So unions and intersections follow the associative rules as well. So it doesn't matter if you are given three elements or three sets in which order you are uniting them. Whether you are uniting the first two and then adding the third one to it or if you are adding the 
last two and then adding the first one to it this order also doesn't change the final answer that is what the associativity associativity law means okay now finally the most important distributive laws remember that so far we had just discussed one operator at a time so either we were taking union as an example or we were taking intersection as another example this distributive law uh, combines both of these operators just like you might have uh, done something like this 2 into 3 plus 5 you used to write it down as 2 times 3 plus 2 times 5 so we say that multiplication is distributed over addition that means you can distribute this multiplication sign to both the elements and then you can add those results this is the meaning of distributive law so now in our case of unions and intersections it would look something like this so a intersection b union c and a union b intersection c so you can think of union as a plus and intersection as a negative so according to this distributive law this intersection will be distributed over union and similarly this union will be distributed over intersection that means we can write down this set as a intersection b united with a intersection c just like multiplication is distributed over addition in a similar way union can also be distributed over intersection so these two results this is the result number one and this is the result number two these two results will also hold true for sets that means sets follow distributive laws okay uh, suppose i ask you to prove that two sets are equal so uh, till now we had been taking some numerical examples to understand the basic idea of equality of sets uh, we remember that uh, if two sets are equal then each of those two sets must be having the same elements but what about abstract cases where you are not given the elements of the set rather you are asked to give uh, whether you if you are asked to prove something like this that if a union b is equal to a intersection b then prove that a is equal to b so how are you going to handle those questions so before actually solving this question i would like you to learn about a few things okay so tell me one thing if i write x is greater than or equal to y and also x is less than or equal to y then what can you conclude from these two conditions if both of these hold so if i say that x is greater than or equal to y and at the same time x is also less than or equal to y so that means x is either greater than y or x can be equal to y and the second inequality says that either x is less than y or x can be equal to y so these two cases lead us to the answer that x has to be equal to y because there is no other possibility x cannot be strictly greater than y because in that case it cannot be less than y and x cannot be strictly less than y because in that case it cannot be greater than y so the only possibility that is left is that x and y has to be equal and similarly suppose i tell you that there are two sets suppose sets c and set d such that set c is a subset of set d and also set d is a subset of set c so that means think of think of this c as a set like this this is c and if i say that d is a subset of c that means d should be somewhere inside but if both of these relations has to be true that means both of them sit inside one another then the only possibility that we are left with is that both of these sets are actually equal because it's only then that both of them can just fit one another otherwise if one is strictly smaller than the other one then they 
the other one cannot sit inside the first one so if say c is strictly greater than d then d is inside c but we cannot have c inside d if you want both of these results to be true you have to set c and d to be equal so that's the first thing you should remember that if you are to prove that two sets are equal then you have to prove these two results first prove that c is a subset of d and then secondly prove that d is also a subset of c so in here if we are if we are required to prove that a is equal to b then we have to prove two things firstly we have to show that a is a subset of b and then we will have to show that b is a subset of a if we can show these two results then we are done then in that case a will automatically become equal to b all right okay so let's start let's try to prove this result so we have to first show to prove that a is a subset of b okay so let's start with a we know that a is a subset of a union b because what is a union b a union b is all the elements from a and b so a has to be smaller than a and b because a union b contains a as well so suppose that uh, this is our a uh, this this set is our a and this set is our b then the entire set is a union b all of these elements combined so a is of course a part of this entire big set this is a part of the entire bigger set so that is why a has to be a subset of a union b but the question says that a union b is actually equal to a intersection b so we can replace a union b with a intersection b so what is a intersection b again think of this like with this diagram so suppose that this is a and this is b then a intersection b is the common portion and a intersection b is contained inside b because this a intersection b is a small part of this entire set b right so this a intersection b is actually contained inside b so what do we get we get that a is contained or is a subset of b now let's prove the other way around to prove b is a subset of a so similarly we start with b b is a subset of a union b in a similar way because b a union b contains both a and b right so b is a subset of it a and b a union b is bigger than b but the question says that a union b is actually equal to a intersection b which is a subset of a because a intersection b is just a small part of it all right because it just contains the common elements of a and b so what are the whatever are the common elements they are also there in a so a intersection b is smaller smaller set contained inside a okay so in this way we get b is contained inside a so hence the proof okay now the difference between two sets suppose i give you two sets the first set is 1 5 7 and 9 let's call the set as set a and let's take another set b as 2 4 5 6 okay then a minus b will be all those elements in a subtracted those elements which are there in b so that means you have to write down all those elements that are there in a but don't write those elements that you find in b as well so let's write start with 1 do you see 1 in b no so we can write it you just have to skip those elements that you see in b so 5 will not come in this set because 5 is there in b so this is a minus b a minus b is all those elements inside a that do not belong to b this is the definition of difference of sets similarly b minus a is all those elements in b which you do not see in a so we have to write down those elements of b which are not there in a 
so we can write 2 4 and we should not write 5 and then lastly 6 so in this way we calculate or compute the difference between two sets okay universal sets universal sets is, is quite a vague set because this sometimes you have to define universal sets on your own so what are universal sets as the name suggests universal sets contain the entire universe okay that's not possible so the definition is that suppose i give you three sets a b and c they are having some elements assume that a is having some elements 1 2 3 b is having some elements say 2 3 4 and c is having some elements say 7 and 8 then universal set will contain all of these elements at least all of these elements it can have something more than that it can have many more elements than those a b and c but the definition says that universal set is a set that contains all the elements so say for example if i give you a set a as 1 5 and 6 and if i give you b as 2 6 and 9 and i ask you to find out a universal set for a and b then you just have to remember one thing you first have to take all of these elements 1 2 5 6 and 9 and then you can add as many elements as you want so universal sets are not unique if you are to find your own universal set you can find as many universal sets as we as you want just make sure that this universal set contains the elements that are there in a and b plus it can contain some more elements of your choice that's it this we denote with script u so it's something like bigger u so this is denoted is denoting our universal set okay the complement of a set so complement of a set is of a set suppose a i give you a set a 2 4 and 5 and if i give you a universal set so universal set has to contain these three elements at least so let's make our own universal set like this okay so it contains 2 4 and 5 so pretty good this is an acceptable universal set so what is a complement a complement denoted as a dash or a small c is u minus a so u minus a and remember this minus it's not wrongly i haven't mistakenly put it uh, a little tilted rather the differences in sets are actually like this they are not just a straight minus they are actually tilted a bit so u minus a is uh, all those elements in u that are not there in a that's just the different that's just the definition of difference that we understood a few minutes back so u minus a that means 1 3 6 and 7 right so this is u minus a that is this is our a complement so a complement is just all those elements that are not there in a that means all those elements that are there in u but not in a so remember that's the definition of a complement T take all those elements that are not there in a and that's it all right so this is the last topic in our discussion today venn diagrams okay so suppose i give you three sets okay take two sets for simplicity for now a is equal to two three five and b is equal to 3, 5 and 9. Then I want to diagrammatically represent these two sets. So how can I represent it? So make a set A. It's not necessary that you always have to make proper circles. You can you can make any type of closed figure you want. Okay, so this is our set A and suppose that this is our set B. I've intentionally made them intersecting because I already see that there are some common parts. If at the very beginning you find out that there are no common parts, you draw the set something like this. So this is somewhere your A is and this is your B. Don't make them intersect. If there are no common elements, keep them far apart from each other. But since I already saw that there are some common elements, I made them, I intentionally made them intersecting. Okay. So here I'll be having 3 and 5 because these are the two elements that are common to both. 
So I'll write these two elements in the common space of A and B. So this is actually the intersection part. This part is actually representing A intersection B. So where should I write 2 here? So 2 should go over here and 9 should go over here. Alright, so what do you think this part is? The part of A subtracting A intersection B. So this part is actually A minus B. Because A minus B are all those elements in A that are not there in B. So it just contains 2, right? So even if you figure out what is A minus B by definition, so you write down all those elements in A that are not there in B. So it will be just 2. And what is B minus A? All those elements in B that are not there in A. So it is just singleton 9. So this part is A minus B. And this part over here, this is B minus A. Okay, and this we have already discussed is A intersection B and this entire set, all of these elements, that means 2, 3, 5 and 9, these form our union. So this is actually A union B. Okay, and if you want to construct your universal set, then you have to take all of these elements, that means the the elements in the union as well as include some more as well okay so we can make our universal set something like this so whatever are left over will sit outside so 1 6 and 7 and 8 will sit outside of these two sets so this is how when diagrams help us to visualize sets and these Venn diagrams will actually become handy when you try to figure out some numerical examples. Let's see one of them. Okay, you are given two sets, set A and set B and you are given that there are 27 elements in A. Remember this is called the cardinality of a set. So cardinality of a set is the number of elements inside a set. So the set A contains 27 elements. So let me draw a set A over here. So this set, whatever it is, it contains 27 elements. It could be 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 27 or whatever it is, it contains 27 elements. And now also the set B is there, which contains 35 elements. So this is set A, this is set B. So A contains 27 elements and B contains 35 elements. And together they contain 50 elements. That means all of these that entire set contains 50 elements out of which A only contains 27 and B only contains 35. So now can you tell me how many elements will be there in A intersection B that means common to both. Can you give it a try? Think about it on your own for a few seconds. I'll help you out then. Okay. So assume that there are X elements inside here. So we need to find out X, right? Okay, so A as a whole contains 27 elements. That means this X is included in this 27 because this entire portion is A. This entire portion is A. So this entire A contains 27 elements and X is a part of it. Okay, so what are those, how many elements are there in A only? That means there are, that are not there in B. So this is 27 minus x all right because uh, x elements are there and there are 27 elements in all so only this part will contain 27 minus x elements and similarly only this part will contain 35 minus x elements so what are the total number of elements in a union b it is 27 minus x plus x and 35 minus x because we can split this entire figure into three parts this, this smaller part, this A minus B part, then this common part, and then this part. Alright? So, the total number of elements will be 27 minus X, which is which are the elements only in A. Then we have X, which are there in both A and B. 
and plus the elements that are only there in B. So we can split A union B in three parts. Elements that are only there in A, only there in B and both A and B. So that gives us the all the elements that are there in A and B which is actually equal to 50. This is our equation. We just need to solve this equation to find out our answer. Okay. So let's solve it. X minus X gets cancelled out. So we have 50 is equal to what is 27 plus 35? That's equal to 62 I guess. 62 minus X. So we take X to the other side. So X is equal to 62 minus 50 which is equal to 12. So this is our answer. There are 12 common elements to both. So if you again uh, visualize, it, visualize this with Venn diagrams, okay, so this is our A and this is our B, then it, then it says that 27 elements are there in A and there are 12 elements in both A and B. So how many elements are there in only A which are not there in B? It's of course 27 minus 12 which is 15. Again, in a similar way, there are 35 elements in B, out of which there are 12 elements in both A and B. So how many elements are there which are only there in B and not in A? It's 35 minus 12, which is equal to 23. And finally, there are 12 elements common to both. So you add all of these three, you'll be getting 50. So 15 plus 23 gives you 38 and then plus 12 gives you 50. That's it. Okay. In a survey of 425 students in a school, it was found that 115 drink apple juice, 160 drink orange juice, and 80 drink both apple as well as orange juice. How many drink neither apple juice nor orange juice? Okay. So this is something that involves universal sets as well. We are given two sets. A set of uh, students who drink apple juice, another set of students who drink orange juice and there will be some students who drink both and some students who do not drink anything. So we will have to first draw a universal set. Then we will be drawing our set of apple juice. Suppose this is the students who take apple juice and this is the set of students who take orange juice. So there are 425 students in all that means the entire universal set contains 425 students. So there are 425 students in all in this universal set. And now they are saying that 115 drink apple juice. So 115 includes this set. Remember that it also includes the common portion because it doesn't say that these guys don't drink orange juice. It just says that these 115 guys or students drink apple juice. They are not saying that they don't drink orange juice. That's why this is actually number of elements in set A. And similarly, we have number of elements in set O to be equal to 160. So this 160 is entire this set and it also includes the common portion because it doesn't say that these guys don't take apple juice. And 80 students are there that drink both apple and orange juices. So that means this A T sits over here, the common portion. So N A intersection O is equal to 80. So now can you tell me how many students neither take apple juice nor take orange juice? That means we have to find out how many students reside in this part. Okay. So now tell me there are in all 115 students that drink apple juice. And out of these, 80 drink both. Can you tell me what is the number of students who just take apple juice and do not take orange juice? So they just take apple juice. So you have to take, subtract those number of students that take both. So that means this part, just this part, ignoring the common portion, will be 115 minus 80, which is equal to, I guess, 35. All right. So this only A minus the intersection part is 35 and similarly only this part 
the set B, subtracting the common part will be 160 minus 80, which is equal to 80. Okay. And we have 80 students could drink both apple and orange juices. So what is the number of students who at least take something? So this number of students who at least take something is all of these parts combined. Remember that we have to do these subtractions so that we do not double count any num any student. So if we don't subtract 80 then there is a problem of double counting some students. So what is the number of students who at least take some kind of juice? So that will be equal to 35 plus 80 plus 80 which is equal to 35 plus 160 which is equal to um, 195. So there are 195 students who take at least one of the juices, okay, either orange juice or apple juice. So how many students are there who neither take apple juice nor orange juice? It is 425 minus 195, which is equal to, you know, uh, and then, okay, three, and then, okay, two. So 230 students are there who neither take apple juice nor do they take orange juice. One more question. A school awarded 58 medals in three sports, namely 38 in football, 15 in basketball and 20 in cricket. If three students got medals in all the three sports, how many received medals in exactly two sports? So there are three sets over here. Until now we have been discussing about two sets, but here we will be required to form three sets. One for football, one for basketball and another one for cricket. So a school awarded 58 medals in three sports. So this is the first sport, this is football, this is the second sport that means this is basketball and this is the third sport that is cricket. Okay, so there are in all 58 medals. That means all of these sets combined are is actually equal to 58. There are 38 medals in football. So that means this entire football was 38. So this includes the common portions as well. Remember, it is not saying that they, they only received football medals. They could have also received basketball and cricket medals. So 38 medals for football, 58 in basketball, 15 in basketball and 20 in cricket. So all of these figures include the common parts as well. If three students got medals in all three sports. So now they are saying that there are three students who got medals in all three sports. That means this you see, this portion that is common in all of the sets. This has three students in it. How many received medals in exactly two sports? So we need to find out how many students were there who got medals in exactly two sports. That means we have to find out. Okay, can I change the color? Okay. So we have to find out this because these are the students who got medals in football and basketball and they didn't get the cricket medal because I'm not including the common portion. Similarly, these are the students who got medals in basketball and cricket and I'm not including football part because that is common to all. So they got medals in basketball and cricket and they, these students got medals in football and cricket. So can you tell me what is this first part? So uh, this part, this part will be 38. Okay, I'll write it down over here. 38 minus x minus z and minus 3. Because this x, this 3 and this z we have subtracted. Similarly, this part will be 20 minus y minus 3 minus z. Because 20 students play cricket and we have 38 minus x minus z and minus 3. 
because this x, this 3 and this z we have subtracted. Similarly, this part will be 20 minus y minus 3 minus z because 20 students play cricket and we have subtracted these three parts the z the y and the 3 and similarly from the basketball if we subtract 15 minus x minus y minus 3 then we get this part so we are having all the individual parts now so this these are the students who only play basketball and nothing else I'm, I'm sorry these are the students who play only football these are the students who play only cricket and nothing else and these are the students who play only basketball okay so these are the students who play only one of the one of the games and x y and Z are those students who play exactly two games and 3 is the number of students who play all the three games so if we add all of these things if we add all of these things we should be getting 58 so we add all of these things and uh, try to simplify and let's see if we can get this x plus y plus z or not so I'll write it down again in the next page so on adding the all of these we get 58 so let's simplify this 38 minus 3 is 35 minus x minus z plus 20 minus 3 is 17 minus y minus z 15 minus 3 is 12 minus x minus y plus x plus y plus z plus 3 is equal to 58. So remember we are doing all these subtractions in order to avoid double counting. Okay, So you have to do these many steps. So minus x and plus x gets cancelled out. Minus y plus y cancels out minus z plus z cancels out what we are left with is 35 plus 17 which is uh, 52 plus 12 and plus 3 this done this done what we are left with is minus z minus x minus y is equal to 58 all right yep now 52 plus 12 plus 13 is uh, 52 plus 15 which is 67 minus we can take minus common over here is equal to 58 and then we can shift x plus y plus z to the other side to get x plus y plus z is equal to 67 minus 58 which is equal to 9. So this is the answer. Alright, so you might have got the answers but uh, there are something that we need to know about Venn diagrams and some properties of unions and intersections. Suppose you are having two sets A and B. This is your set A and this is your set B. So the total number of elements in the set A union B, that means the total number of elements in this entire set will be the number of elements in set A, that means the number of elements in the set A only, plus the number of elements in set B. So the number of elements in set B includes this, 
But remember that this part has been double counted. The common portion A in section B has been double counted because we counted it in A as well and B as well. So we subtract it once. So this formula, using this formula, you can get answers in a even better and faster way. So uh, we may try. You may try once again solving the same question that we did in the very first question from the Venn diagrams. You can use this result and see that you are actually getting your answer much faster. And similarly, if you are having three sets, sets A, B, and C. Then the number of elements in this entire portion is the number of elements in A union B union C is the number of elements in A plus the number of elements in B plus the number of elements in C minus the number of elements in A and B combined minus the number of elements in A and C minus the number of elements in A and Sorry, it's B and C and C plus the number of elements in A intersection B intersection C. All these occur as a result of double counting. So if you want to understand, so if you want to add all of these elements, then you first add the elements that come in A and B and C. But you see the common portions are added twice. So we subtract them, but when you subtract them, this the portion that is common to all is subtracted as a whole. So we again have to add this. So it will make more sense to you if uh, you take some examples. Some take some numbers for A, B, and C, and try to find out what you get uh, on applying these steps. So thanks a lot. Uh, we are still left with a bit more difficult questions on sets. We will take it up later. Till now, study hard, study smart. Bye bye.